Hello, today we're going to talk about calculating um, volume of media inside pipes and inside equipment in general. I have been playing with this for a while, but I never had time to fully test it and to get good results. But it's been itching me because I knew there was a better answer to the existing solutions on the internet. Um, the question is, how do you calculate the volume of media in the pipes or in any equipment? Every single video, blog or forum post that I've seen are dealing with single pipe, open ends um, and while that's good info, I find it purely theoretical because you're never gonna measure the volume pipe by pipe. Most of these solutions rely on copying the inside surface of the pipe. In some cases you would trim those surfaces, um, you would stitch them, you would cap the ends uh, and then sculpt, convert them into a solid that has a volume and for which you can assign a material. My mind went straight away to derive, combine, sculpt or possible extrude with intersect to better, faster do this on complete tube and pipe assemblies, not just individual pipes. I can't expect any of you to manually do this because I know I wouldn't. So the fastest method that I found was to derive these into a single part, fill in the voids and then bring in the derive again where we would subtract the second derive from the first one and we will be left out with just the volume inside the pipe. It sounds complicated, but it really isn't. It's really simple. So let me show you how to do that. The first step would be to prepare your assembly. As you can see, I've opened the tube and pipe runs separately, um, but even here, I'm gonna hide a lot of the components and create uh, design view or level of detail if you want you can create a level of detail I wouldn't bother for what we're doing just a simple level of detail would be would do so as soon as you select your parts create a design view I'm not gonna do the whole pipes the whole routes um, it would take a lot of time. I'm on a home laptop uh, and I'm not sure <laughs> I have enough computing power. Uh, but what we are going to do is select a couple of individual routes. Um, as you can see, they're all separate just to prove the case. Uh, they don't need to be connected. They don't need to be uh, on the same assembly. They could be separate routes and um, will get the volume of these and on the same principle you can get the volume of all the pipes so the, the whole tube and pipe assembly now if you don't want to edit your original tube and pipe you can save copy as or create your derive but don't save the as assembly yeah? but as long as you don't save it you're not really editing so we're going to start by creating a new part. And the first thing you want to do is you want to save it because I found that by saving the file, you get rid of a lot of the crashes and the long computing times. So let's save the file. And we can call this a volume. And then we're going to go to modify, um, sorry, create, derive. And let's select our um, assembly. Uh, before you click open, go to options and select your level of detail um, or design view representation or level of detail. You can also do this later, but I'm lazy. So you can do it in here as well. 
as you can see it only brings what, what I've selected now in the options um, don't mark anything don't patch any holes don't remove anything and there are no internal voids because my pipes are have open ends I'll show you in a second what I mean so let's save this again no I don't want to save that one just this one that's what I mean by open ends don't be confused by the colors um, we use them to differentiate different uh, pipe segments it's just easier on the layout so what we would need to do is fill in the pipes with material some material um, and then we bring in the derive again and we subtract the new derive having just the volume in I'll show you in a second um, but the fastest way to fill in the voids and cap all these ends because you can do it manually you can go to surface and you go patch and you select one and you click apply and then you select the next one and you click apply and then you, you gotta select them all and you gotta stitch them and you gotta combine them so or sculpt them this takes way too long so the fastest way would be to use the Revit add-on simplification um, if it's not showing up in here you can always yeah make sure that it's selected on the add-ons um, and if you don't have a tab here you don't have it anywhere you can go to recognize Revit features and you have filled voids at this point you might be tempted to use auto select um, let me just show you why you shouldn't because you're gonna fill the holes um, and every every slot or pocket that you can think of which you don't want so you can use loop and edge a face I'll, I'll leave it to loop and I'll select I'll start selecting that's one second the third one really I should skip this <laughs> you don't need to see me hunt and pick and click okay and what you will have is one solid body so at this point we want to go to 3d model finish rabbit And use derive again same assembly same options and 
and you will end up with two separate bodies. Sorry. The pipes and the pipes um, with a fill in volume, two solid bodies. At this point, you can use combine. Base would be the first solid, the filled in solid. Tool body would be the second uh, derived, and we want to cut. So we want to cut the, uh, the base. Um, not sure if you want to keep the pipes. Maybe you want to check the volume on those, or you, uh, I'm not sure why, but I think you shouldn't. But just bear in mind, if you mark that keep tool body, you will end up with two solids. One is the, vo the, the volume, and the other one will be the second uh, derive with the pipes that we brought in. And this is it. Why do I have these? Oh, there's probably a gap in between the pipe and the elbow. But this is actually the volume in the pipe, and not just in one, in all of them. So if it worked on my laptop, I'm, I'm sure it'll work on a proper workstation. At this point, you can check the properties of the body and you can change his appearance if you want to. Where are we? Let's go to water bubbles. Let's see that. Yeah. Or you could go to go water again and you've got the volume you've got the weight but you can always check it in here as well and that's how you get the volume of the whole tube and pipe not just one at a time I don't think it was complicated um, I think it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it's working quite well. Uh, you may want to suppress the link. I'm not sure if you want to keep it as it was at a certain point, if you want to stop it from updating. Uh, but let me just show you some of the problems that I had and um, how to overcome, overcome them. Um, I hope you won't have these problems, but it's better if I'll show you. One of the problems that you might have is um, when you try to simplify and to fill in the voids, um, Inventor might complain that it couldn't uh, connect all the faces, um, it couldn't fill in all the voids, and that's because uh, some of the elbows in Content Center have not been properly published. They are the same as they were done 10 years ago um, and they have disconnected faces I guess at that time they didn't have a proper technique to do these uh, and they were left over um, there's an idea on, on the forum on the idea station there's a post sorry on the idea station so uh, if you think this needs to be fixed go find it it's called tube and pipe overhaul I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, go give me a vote. Let me just show you why that uh, those elbows need to be republished, re-authored and re-sent to a content center. This is the default elbow. Not all of them, but for the PVCU that I was using for this project. Um, this comes straight from content center. That's how it's coming. Three of revolutions. You've got one end, the other one, and the middle, most importantly, sorry, the middle. And that's where the problem is. Let's go in. Because they're revolving this face into the other one, um, that there's a problem and inventor cannot do this revolve. So what they've done is they created the radius, the revolve radius, at a very small distance, just so that it computes. But what this does, 
it may look complete but if you zoom in let's try and zoom in let's do that again you have disconnected faces and unless you manually pick these faces as well in the simplification for all the elbows um, Inventor will not be able to fill in the voids. I think this is wrong. I think you should, I have, and I think you should change these in Content Center or go and vote on the idea station. And instead of having the third revolve there, just create the arc there. You can always suppress these and do it with a swap. I'm just sweeping that for surface around the arc. Um, let's zoom in a bit. A little more. That's actually perfect. There's nothing there. So that's one of the problems that you might have when trying to fill in the voids. The second problem you might have would be when you choose the, the edges to, to cap to fill in. Let's go back to our master here. I'll show you why, just a second. It's like the case with this pressure gauge here, and I have some reducing bushes. Um, you may want to cap it here because you don't want to calculate the volume inside in here somewhere if there is a void. Uh, but the problem is you don't want to pick the top surface because otherwise you would bring in the pocket from the reducing bushes as well. So let's see if I can do a cross section, if I find the straight surface. Not that one. Just go in a bit. My laptop's gonna decolate. Alright, stop. So you may want to choose the bottom surface. Yes, you lose some volume, um, but otherwise you would bring in the pockets from the reducing bushes as well. So when you use the simplify, you select an edge there, you select an edge here, and if you have parts like this, you may want to consider choosing the inside face, otherwise you'll bring in the pockets. And this is it. That's how you calculate volume for the whole tube and pipe, not just one pipe at a time. Uh, I mean, it would be ridiculous. Um, look at all this. How much time do you think I would need to calculate the volume in all these pipes? I don't have that much time. <laughs> so this is it. Um, I hope you found it useful. Um, till next time.